Camry Ativa, 2006 model. I've had this car nine years now. Just want to take a full review on it and see what this car has got and what it hasn't got. The color is ice blue. This is a four cylinder, 2.4 liter. Haven't washed it because I want to do an actual review on how it looks over time. Everything looks pretty straight. Sits well with the black slimline personalized plates. Over time you do get little bits of chips in it. Like that's one there. But there's not too many considering this car has done 170,000 kilometers or that's about 106,000 miles only. If you remember it's an 06. Now the Ativa is the mid-range. In this one you get the 16 inch alloys opposed to the hubcaps in the base model. Color coded mirrors. This has only tinted windows that I'm aware of for any aftermarket fitted accessories. So the car itself is very reliable. I haven't had anything wrong with it. I've had it for nine years, nine and a half years. I bought it just under four years old. There's nothing wrong with it. They... So if I have to try to look for any dings or bangs or whatever, there's a little one there. You can see that's reflecting. Obviously not wear and tear, just what happened. There's another little dint in his right there. Hi boys. scratches here the wife done that one that wasn't me oh this car hasn't been washed for a long time but look at the design floor if you will that puddles up dirt along here and I did knock it on a pole and the door was open so it's a slightly dint or pulled in the next model up had the dotted lights the LED dots I believe they were uh, now these ones are supposed to be on because the parkers are on but both sides I suspect the wires come loose on that because they were working when you tap them but otherwise minor to fix slimline plates again as well as the number plate light a dull that one might be out so I have to check that one as I said turn the windows let's have a look inside what we got these are the seats that are above the base model, the next one, blue seats of some sort. Don't forget this Ativa, it's got a little bit more than the Atis. So there's the odometer there now. Now also, I believe, the trip computer is in this model, but not the Atis. Okay, what you get, it tells you what gear you're in, so there's neutral. Park, reverse, and those beeps remind me. Had the rear sensors fitted when we bought the car. And obviously you got your drive, what gear you select as well. So the trip computer shows liters per hundred. Now like I said, I had this car nine years. Whenever I've actually done the calculations, that appears to be half a liter per hundred kilometers better than we actually fill up at the pumps. So it's got litres per hundred. To access that, you've got the switch on the steering wheel, display switch. So pressing that toggles between the menus. Three kilometres driven since the car was being turned on. Average nine kilometres per hour. Outside temperature 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, Fahrenheit, who knows, it could be 70 something. Uh, range to empty 341. So there's estimating that with a gauge a little bit more than half. So this car can do over 600 kilometers on 50 liters, which is pretty good. So that's what you get in there. Obviously, temp, temp gauge, tachometer, and like I said, been four cylinder, they rev a little harder. You can see a little over six before red lines. Also, got cruise control. Somewhere around here. There's the stick there. 
So that's easy set. Just press the button to engage it. So that little clock like thing, see on a instrument panel comes in, comes out and press down to set it at the speed. And to lower your speed while in cruise, lower it to raise your speed, push up. To temporarily disable it, pull as well as tap the brake. And that will temporarily disable it. And to resume, just push back up on that stick. No doubt your intermediate wipers are on this side too. So you've got the variable control for intermediate. You can pull up to activate the wipers once. Like any other car, pull back to go for water. And over here you've got your driving lights. To access that, just twist the knob here. And then that one in there. As well with your headlights. Off, on and auto. Now the auto is reasonable. That little dot there in the dash is the sensor. And then when you've got your headlights on, it doesn't affect the clock. Normally when you put your headlights on, the clock dims, but it knows that it's still light. One hour slow, because you can't change the clock when the car is running. You have to be in the on or accessory position. And to access the clock, you push these buttons here. Another time, this one is a bit sticky, but they work okay. While the car is on or running, the one next to it, the speed alert, which the car, this car has, can be adjusted. It's got three memory settings for it, or you can just put it anywhere between. Except for 115, because when the speedo reaches 109, it will sound. And true speed is about 102. It's got the climate control vents, six stack CD player in this model. Your AM FM radio with disc change presets. Dual zone climate control now is quite reasonable for a car of this age. So dual zone climate control. So if you push, turn it on, put it auto, you can adjust one side and then the other side. And if you want them the same, you can just press that button to make them the same. And we'll just do what it needs to do to get there. Or you manually control it, either either. The base bottle doesn't have climate control. There's two big knobs, the old style red and cold buttons. The gear lever shift, it's a weird kind of thing. When you're in park, you cannot get it out of gear until you press your foot on the brake, or you can actually press that button to release it. So when it's out of brake, that's reverse, neutral, drive, fourth, third. So to get second, you've got to pull over and down, make it harder so they don't over rev the car. And then low. It's not one, it's low in this car. Because I expect you not to use it. So you've got a little cubby here. Put some things. And that's a little outlet for 12 volt. I suppose you can put a cigarette light as well. Or another phone charger. And an ashtray compartment where the cigarette lighter would be. Cup holders. You've got this little console button to release the pull-up. With a little slide tray in it slides out somewhat and with storage in there now the only thing I don't like about this is it's too far back if I'm sitting where I've got my seat set for me and I comfortably set my arm is forward more than I like it'd be nice if this could be adjusted forward I could put the seat back but I can't reach the pedals same with the doors you've got this in the way where you would normally put your arm could do that but bit dangerous because if you want the wheel you should be holding it anyway can't get your hand out quick enough okay so there's electric windows all around obviously the fronts the backs each side so just like this this car did have a recall on electric window buttons they did some sort of grease into it nothing major and then you can lock your doors lock your windows electric mirrors is here so obviously just select the side you want and then adjust it so let's go for the right and in and out so there's electric windows more vents here another vent there now we're in tea you did get marks of scuff so that's uh, got to be clean so just a scuff 
Club box. That's just standard on the other side there, nothing special. But you've got a hook. In case you have to hang on because the driver is going too fast for you. Sun visor with a little mirror. The map lights on, on, and that's not a light in there. Now, the interior light is there, but the globe needs to be replaced. Now that, I don't know that, could be a microphone slot now that I'm thinking of it. Sun glasses, cubby. The driver's sun visor. I guess they keep these mirrors on both sides to make it universal between countries. Now, I'm at the height I want. I've actually lulled my sea all the way, and I'm not tall, but you can see the headroom is reasonable. I like it to be a bit better than that because I feel like I'm too close here to the A pillar. Certainly when you've got this flipped around, it doesn't tuck in nicely under that and I feel even closer here, very little room. Like I said, I'm not tall, I'm about 158 centimetre or 5 foot something. 5 foot 3, probably. I'm about five foot three. This model also has electric seats. Electric seats. Lumber support. That is doing something, you just can't see it in there. Tilt back, side forward, and down. Like, I'm not tall, but I like it all the way down to get my head off that roof. Okay, we'll move to the back. Once again, stand the door, electric mirror. No pockets in the door here. The front, you get them. We get little nets each side. Also, you get climate control vents but these are missing the little slider bars because the kids kicked them off when they're younger and as you can see it's car it's kid friendly it's also got this center over shoulder seat belt now once again I'm not tall but this is more than adequate room between me and the front seat it is a very big car very big car for a nice family, like your four adults in perfect, probably fifth even. But anyway, with the seat belts for the front, you can adjust them. Just pull on that and slide it down, up and down. Hmm, they work, I thought they didn't. On all corners, like I say, they even got on the driver's side. I believe that was because they keep universal between countries. You do get very good, generous size boot. Even holds my shopping. Look at that. Got some shopping here. Goes in pretty far. 60 40 split. But that's not much different distance between these bits here. Not much. But once again, if you don't have to carry stuff all the time, you wouldn't have got a Camry. I uh, just got a few mats to keep the carpet clean, but looks like it didn't work. It does get knocked and dinged a bit. All the scratches from getting prams in and out of the years. Spare tie underneath, I don't believe I've ever used it. Give me these little boards under the carpet. Try and expand the floor pan. Looks pretty clean under here. Now under the bonnet, just a cab release inside. And standard, pull the button out here. And listen to those hydraulic lifts. Very nice, still works well. Now the engine is nothing special other than it is a Toyota and it is a very good engine. Nothing wrong with it all. I've only replaced batteries, wheels, anything wear and tear I've replaced, nothing on repair or failure. Just looking at, there's not even any signs of oil. Maybe a little sweat there, maybe. 
little sweat, but nothing major. I did service this car. Now look at the colour of that, beautiful. I did service it three months ago. I've just turned the engine off, so it is not enough on the stick by the looks, but there is enough in there. Did the service on it, checked the brakes. Being the light car, I don't know what day, about 1400 kilo. The front brakes look brand new on 100,000 k's or 100, uh, 62 miles. The brakes actually look good in the front. I've worn more on the back than the front. I don't believe I've ever put front brake pads in this car in nine and a half years in 100,000 k's. But when I first bought it, I had to put rear pads in because when I got it, they must have been near out with the last owner. So you just take it easy, a lot on the brakes. You wouldn't even have to replace them. So like I said, it's just, everything is just nice and tight and works well. The gear change works perfect. There's no clunks, no knocks. There is absolutely nothing wrong with this car. And nine and a half years of it, I can say that for sure. Oh, I guess it's time to take it for a drive. Now, let's listen to this engine start up. Look at that. Beautiful. Perfect. Been a four-cylinder. I hate it when it is cold because it revs too hard. Two and a half RPMs and then it will drop slightly, but I like it quite a bit. Obviously, it's a four-cylinder. Now don't get me wrong, the Camry is not an exciting car at any means. It is a brilliant A to B car. And because there's a reliability, it'll get you to see more so than any other car on the road. Like I said, no frills, no exciting bits of aluminum or aluminium from where I am. It's clean, standard design. When I drive this car nice and calm, and I'm not in traffic, just I live out more so on open roads. I don't like taking the RPMs more than 3000, there's no need for it. Just let the car do its own. Because of that, it does it very well, very smooth. So at 62 mile per hour, which is our 100 kilometers per hour, true speed, not the speedo speeds, I'm doing about 106. The Taco's sitting on 2000 RPM. Now, if you just listen to the road noise. Obviously you can hear it, but that's not too bad. Like any car, cruise control will not engage unless you're doing more than 40 km per hour, 25 mile per hour. So it will take it from that point up to 62 mile per hour We'll just see how comfortable Karma Collected it actually does it. From here, here we go. It's going very slowly for some reason. Uh, 37. The RPM is two and a half and we're approaching 50. RPM is 27 and we're preaching uh, 90, 56, and here we go, 62, 3000 RPM, dropped to 22, now it's dropped to 2, at 62 mile per hour, 100 kilometers per hour. So, it was a test to show you the comfort, it's trying to pick the most economical way to get up to that level without wasting your fuel. Thanks for watching.